A large model showman's engine, this one is part 75, looking for a solution to the problem of why the live steam injector is not reliable. The injector only seems to work when the boiler is almost full of water. In the past I've always used Jubilee fittings injectors and I've had no problems at all with any of them. This traction engine uses a number 8 Jubilee fittings injector and I even bought another one thinking that the one that was fitted on the engine that was quite an old one may have been faulty but it turned out that it wasn't and they both worked fine. Having conversations with a few people who are definitely in the know, the man from John Rex, David English, John Holroyd and a few others, all pointed me in the right direction. The final conversation took place with David English, who asked me where the check valves were on the boiler. As David and I were having this conversation, suddenly the penny dropped. The water rushing into the boiler is cooling the steam, because the position of the check valves on this boiler are a bit high. And as the cold water rushes into the steam space, it condenses the steam, and this condensate gets carried down the pipe, which feeds the injector with steam, and the injector knocks off. Here's an excerpt from the end of part 66, which was a live steam test, and in this clip, when the boiler was almost full anyway, the injector suddenly started working. You don't have to take my word for it, here is the video. I'm going to leave you with this image of the injector actually injecting. The reason it knocked off here was the boiler was full. So full, in fact, that the water was being carried into the cylinder, and here it is rushing up the chimney. In this clip you can see that the check valve is not on the centre line of the boiler, this is more common. It's on the top part of the boiler, so as you can see any water being injected into the boiler is going to be generally above the level of the water in the boiler. In the last episode I threaded and fitted a small piece of pipe to extend the feed from the check valve further down into the boiler, but this pipe was too thin and soon fractured. I went over to Blackgate's engineering and bought this copper pipe, which is much thicker. Over now to my Boxford lathe, and the first part of the job is to face across the front, as always. Copper is a very soft metal, quite difficult to turn at times, and as you can see, the hole in the middle is now smaller. A quick clean around the edge with the file, and now I carefully need to thread this piece of copper tubing. And my weapon of choice for this is a die holder fitted with a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch die. When I threaded the tube, I used plenty of cutting lubricant, and I've also applied quite a lot of cutting lubricant for the drilling operation. I'm drilling out the tube to 7 seconds of an inch in diameter. The swarf comes off in one continuous length. A health and safety warning, it's a good idea to keep yourself a long way from this part of the operation. Should the swarf catch in the chuck, and believe me it does, it will flail around and you could be injured because the swarf is sharp. Because you can't really grip copper tubing quite as tightly as other metals, you will notice the rings around the copper tubing, which were caused by the threading operation because the piece of copper tube spun round in the chuck jaws. This, however, is unimportant because I'm going to reduce the diameter of the piece of copper tubing so that it fits in the 5 16 of an inch diameter hole in the bush of the boiler. In this clip, I'm using a round nose tool to reduce the diameter of the copper tube. I am aware that later on in this video, I'm going to run into problems because the hole in the bush of the boiler and the hole in the check valve don't really line up as well as they should do. I had to make a slight modification to the check valve to make everything fit together, but in the end it did fit as you will see if you continue watching. The injector that's currently fitted to the engine is one that I bought from the very talented John Holroyd at the Steam Workshop. It's very scale and looks great, but I'm going to have to modify the piping to make it work. And you will have to believe me, but fitting the long piece of 3 8 of an inch diameter pipe from the check valve on the boiler underneath the engine to the other side where the injector is, is not going to be an easy job because I'm doing it single handed. I really need another person at the other side, but it's very difficult in this small village to find anybody. In the meantime, this clip is showing the reduced diameter of the piece of pipe that's going to go down into the boiler. I removed the pipe from the union nut in the chuck applied some Loctite 542 thread sealant to the threads as shown here, and then screwed the pipe into the check valve. 
The red cross that you've just seen on screen means do not use a pair of pliers. This will mark the copper very badly. I'm using the four jaw self-centering chuck in my smart and brown lathe to hold the copper pipe. All I have to do now is rotate the check valve to tighten the pipe. Out of the workshop and into the garage to see if everything fits, and of course it doesn't. The holes are not lining up with the studs properly. That's mainly due to the fact that the hole in the boiler bush is not exactly in the centre between the two studs, and the hole in the check valve isn't in the centre either. The solution wasn't too drastic. I stuck the pipe into the hole in the boiler bush and bent the check valve into the correct position. Then I enlarged the two holes in the check valve's flange to one drill size above what they were. I've actually fitted a couple of O-rings between the pipe and the body of the check valve. In a perfect world, this will work fine and there will not be any steam leaking. This is a test fit of the check valve to make sure that it sits OK on the boiler. Once I'm certain that everything fits OK, I will remove the check valve, make a new gasket and refit it. Then all I will need to do is refit the pipe from the injector to the check valve and honestly, this is not an easy job. When I replace the original injector complete with its secondary check valve, I'm going to connect the pipe to the injector end first. That should give it a bit of support underneath the engine. And once I've done that, I will then try and convince the check valve that it needs to accept the pipe at this end. I really have struggled with this job because I've had very bad sciatica but now that's mended, I'm not in pain anymore, so the job has become a little bit easier. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.